Hello, welcome to part two in this two-part series where we're looking at how to rejuvenate an overused and under-maintained paddock. This particular one we started in part one, go check that out if you haven't seen it already. It was in a dreadful condition, the grass was just not being cared for, all sorts of weeds, some of these enormous great thistles that you can see behind me here. And we've started to do various things to it to bring it back to tip-top health so that our packers get the best grass to eat. Now to do that, a number of things we had to do. So from day one of this project, we've been focusing on the grass. How do we get that back under control? We need to get it reasonably short so that we know that all the moisture can get to the roots, the sun can get to those fresh leaves, and it can start to help itself get back to health by, by growing fresh again. We had to get it cut down. It was tall, full of thatch. It was quite unpleasant. The alpacas certainly weren't going to eat it. So the first thing we did was we threw this at it. Basically, we've got a wide, I think it's a 54 inch deck, um, underbody mower on this compact tractor. That was able to take the top off. If you don't have one of these, then you can have a self-propelled or motorized uh, topper that you can tow behind something like a, an ATV, a quad bike. And then once that was down, we were able to start using the ride-on mower. Uh, two advantages for switching between these. This is side discharge, so the grass is gonna go everywhere. Sure, it cuts it up, it's nice, but it's not mulching. This thing can come along and mulch, but it can also pick it up, it has a collector on it. If you don't have one of these, then you could try raking. Uh, we did actually in some areas a little bit harder to get to, but we needed to pick up all that grass off the ground because we have a condition here at this time of year called facial eczema, which is devastating for alpacas and many other livestock as well. Um, essentially, the grass that's laying dead on the top gets moisture underneath um, and it just creates a breeding ground and facial eczema is a, it, it's a horrible disease. We'll do a video on that at some point, but we won't get into that here. The key thing is to make sure that what you cut, you get back up off the ground. So tackle it with the tools that you need to do so use something that's a bit more sort of a bit of finesse to try to get that back down to being almost sort of like a lawn uh, and, and give it the best chance to get that moisture and sun down to the fresh grass where it's needed. In part one, I shared with you that we use glyphosate as our weed killer of choice. It's essentially Roundup as it was originally called and when some changes were made legally, um, everyone now seems to sell it under various different labels. There are some concerns online about its health implications, certainly with things that we might eat. I'm not here to tell you whether it's safe or not. All I can say is that we have found it to be very effective. It gets the job quite quickly, the weeds certainly disappear, and they don't seem to come back. A little bit of spot weeding is always needed, of course. You're gonna get new weeds coming up, but it really is very effective. Because of those health concerns, uh, and as I say, I can't say whether they're real or not, but if there's concerns, it's worth looking into. I'm quite keen to move to other options, organic options. I also tried some of this product called Slasher. It wasn't one I'd heard of. Uh, it certainly isn't as cost effective, it comes in a much smaller package for the same price. Um, but it seems to have actually been more effective at killing the weeds initially. They vanish much sooner. Whether they'll stay down, I don't know. There's still some work to be done to find that out, but I might do a bit more of a scientific study and see if I can get you some good results on that. The other thing I've been trying is a very simple homemade brew. So it's white vinegar, mix it with, uh, this is five liters, mix it with a cup of salt and a large tablespoon of washing up liquid. Mix it up and spray that on the plants. It seems to be reasonably effective, certainly on the broad leafed plants. Again, haven't been using it long enough to really say whether it's going to be effective or not, but it does mean that we start to have some alternatives to the glyphosate. The next thing we need to look at is how we're going to actually apply this weed killer. And there are a number of ways to do that depending on the size of the problem, how many weeds you've got that you want to deal with. So a simple method, the usual pump bottle. Most people have used one of these before. Pump it up, fill it with air, and you've got yourself a wand. You can store it for a little while, certainly with the glyphosate. The vinegar actually is sort of pre-mixed. Um, slasher, I'm not sure how, you'd be, how long you'd be able to keep that stored, but it's an easy way to just have a bottle of it in your shed, so when you need it, you can go and pull it out. Fairly lightweight, I think that takes five litres in there. For the larger paddock and the more stubborn weeds, you might want to consider a 15 litre backpack. This one comes with a handle so that I can introduce the pressure into the tank as I'm moving around, carrying it on my back, spraying it with a wand much better if you've got a larger area or if you need to be going up and down some, some hills. Just carrying this is a lot easier than carrying something separate in your hand. 
Do be careful though, when you fill this up, I've noticed that if you can put it on a table and then sort of back into it, it makes it a lot easier than trying to lift 15 litres onto your back from the ground. Of course, if you've got a sizable property, you might really benefit from one of these. So it's a tow behind, pull it behind your ATV, your quad, your tractor, anything with a regular ball type tow mechanism. 200 litres of made up liquid can go into this. It has a high pressure pump built into it that's powered directly off the machine at the front using just a, a simple cable. And then the pipe is the same as you would use for a regular air compressor. So you're able to extend it. So for example, I've added an additional 50 meters onto the, I think it was five meters came with this. It means that I can pull up almost anywhere and then wander off carrying nothing more than this. I don't have to pump anything and I've got 200 liters. That's enough to do an enormous number of weeds, such as down the edges of your drive and things after, of course, you've looked after the alpacas in their paddock. That's great, so you've sprayed your weeds and they're dead but there may still be some seed heads there. So we need to get them out of the paddock. We don't want to just let the mower go over them. That would be the easy option. What we need to do is get them cut out either directly at the ground, maybe with a spade, that would be hard work, or maybe using a tool such as a weed eater or strimmer, different names for different territories. Essentially, we have one here with a blade on it. This can get through some pretty thick, gnarly stuff and the traditional sort with its string. Now these tend to wear out a little bit faster. You're constantly pulling the strings through. Uh, but if you've got one of these, you can still do a reasonable job for most weeds, especially once they're dead, they're often a lot softer and gonna put up less resistance. And of course, whenever you're working with power tools, health and safety first. We're good to go. And of course, the other task that's part of a routine maintenance, not just a paddock rejuvenation project, is to clear up the alpaca poo from time to time. Great stuff for the garden, so go and put this somewhere really valuable that you can keep hold of it and use it when you need it. It's a real slow release fertilizer. Fantastic on all the edibles and non-edibles around the garden, absolutely magic. But you wanna be getting it out of the paddock. So while I'm doing this, and this is a pretty mucky job, perhaps you could do something that's a lot easier, which is just to hit the like button, subscribe, and the bell so that you can stay up to date with future updates. Meanwhile, I'll get on and do this. Fantastic, we're nearly done on this paddock rejuvenation project. We've already got the grass to exactly where we need it to be. The blade length just right for the photosynthesis while allowing plenty of water to get down into the roots for maximum growth opportunity. We've also addressed the weeds, the small weeds on the ground, as well as those tall thistles with three different products. The glyphosate, and we've discussed there are some pros and cons around that, and organic options, the off the shelf and the homebrew which is basically a vinegar, salt, and washing up liquid mix. I'm really keen to see where that goes on the long term, especially if I can use that around areas perhaps where I might have edibles, for example. We've cut those weeds down and we've raked them and got them out the paddock so there's no opportunity for seed heads to set off new growth. We need to be doing that regularly because otherwise we're just gonna be chasing our tails, constantly trying to look after the weeds. The thing I'm now quite excited to get into, oh, not get into, next thing I want to try is this. I have a thousand litres, a cubic metre, an ICB of fish fertiliser. This is from the food industry. It's mashed up heads, tails, scales, guts, bits that you're probably not going to want to eat, although might find in the odd pie. So this here, it was out of date when I got it. Um, for a year, it's been going through all the different temperature cycles of sunshine, <laughs> I don't know what sort of condition it's going to be in. But basically I'll be putting this into that um, pump based spreader that I got on the back of the tractor. That has a five meter boom wand. So it's going to allow me to get this onto the paddock. And apparently this is going to be amazing for the grass. So I'm really keen to see what this does as well. And of course I'll put it around most of the trees and anything else that I really want to give a boost to. We already know that seaweed based fertilizers are fantastic. So this is an organic option. Let's see how it goes. I haven't opened this mind and it's already out of date a year ago. Ah, right, okay. So we have, uh, we have a tap at the bottom that we can use to, to get it out if anyone's able to elevate this. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to scoop it out the top and it looks like there's a crust on it and um, it's nasty. Um, 
Anyway, we'll, um, we'll no doubt show you in a future episode uh, the process of getting this onto the ground. Um, yeah, we'll leave that one for now. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for future notifications.